So what is going on YouTube? My name is Mehul and welcome back to another Flutter video in which I wanted to actually go into a little bit of depth of Dart, how Dart works because Flutter is essentially built on top of Dart and if you don't really know how to work with Dart, you won't be able to work with Flutter really well. But what I thought was is that I believe a lot of people, a lot of you are coming from a programming background itself mostly javascript because a lot of my audience is javascript but even if not javascript then you would have some sort of experience with some sort of programming language if not then i would not really recommend directly jumping onto flutter right because you need to think a little bit in terms of how programming languages work before you actually jump on to a you know a framework which supports two operating systems out of the box right so i would recommend you to learn a simpler language like python or java or javascript something like that build a little bit of applications some cli based applications with that and once you're done with that then come on to gui right cli first gui later so what we have now is all of you guys who have a little bit of experience or maybe more experience or maybe super experienced with some sort of language now for all of you guys, I'm just gonna walk over through Flutter as we are building the application. The syntax is pretty simple, nothing crazy stuff going on in Flutter. And if you're coming from JavaScript, you're gonna basically feed home. It's just a little bit uh, better, I won't even say better, it's, it's more like a controlled version of JavaScript, right? So yeah, you're gonna have some types, you're gonna have some semicolons here and there. That's it, that's all. Otherwise, it's it's just basically just like JavaScript. All right, so let's start with a little bit of Flutter. So what we have is a main function here, and in Flutter, and in actually in Dart, what happens is that whatever you write um, inside main is actually executed the very first time the script is run, automatically, right? So we are not calling main anywhere, but it still would be called, just like how it works in C and C++. So if I write hello inside there, you're gonna get hello and no automatic semicolons so you lose that luxury of javascript if you're coming from javascript in a habit like that which i am definitely in so i'm gonna miss a lot of semicolons and a lot of errors would pop up eventually in our journey so that's one hits up so yeah so looking at our source code of hello world what we are seeing is that we have a similar main method here and it calls another function which is a run app and passes the argument as my app and you can see we have a little arrow notation again javascript forks you should be able to relate to this so if i write something like void print something and if i write print wow like this right so this would mean that i'm actually returning um or actually not let's not do that because this would confuse you let's return 100 and what i want to do now is i want to print something right and when I run this, what you're gonna see is again, it should not be void, it should be actually int, right? If I run this again, you're gonna see that 100 gets logged to the console, right? Because of the arrow notation. Again, you can make use of the expanded notation if you want, and just write return 100 here, just like nice guys would do, but if you are a bad guy, then you're gonna make use of the arrow function. It's, it's one and the same thing, it's no difference so that's one thing again now we're gonna build our flood our dot knowledge as we proceed again classes is just another way of representing um you know entities with similar behavior just like any other oop language has class support and that also has class support so one thing you have to remember in flutter is that everything in flutter is in a form of a widget Right. So there's a class, there's a widget class on the top of which every other class is built. Right. So in Flutter, what happens is that you have widget, a root widget, which spans some, you know, widget one and widget two on the screen. And then widget one would maybe give widget 1.1, widget two would give widget 2.1 widget 2.2 and so on and so forth right so if you're coming from a language like react native 
it would look similar to how views work in React Native, right? Or as a matter of fact, in um, regular XML language as well for Android Studio. Um, I think this closely relates to how you're gonna create the uh, widgets in Android Studio itself, right? I guess they also call it widgets only. I don't remember exactly, but yeah, I believe they do. So yeah, that's that's the main crux of the thing. We have classes. Classes extends some sort of widget class, which makes them widget, right? And then you overwrite a bunch of methods, and that's that's it. The other widgets make use of those methods, and you do not really have to worry about the underlying architecture or how this works, unless you are really interested into like digging deep into Flutter, or maybe if you want to develop some sort of additional functionalities with it. So yeah, that's that's basically the overview of the Hello World program. I know I haven't gotten into how the stuff works, how the widgets work, which you're gonna see later on. But more or less, this file. Um, it's, it's basically just a little bit of widgets being instantiated and just enough content for you to see a counter on the application just like we saw in the last video. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for this video. In the next one, we're going to see how widgets work in Flutter and uh, how we can tweak this application a little bit to our needs. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you then in the next one.